Hi, I'm Devin Hayes. And I'm Amanda Joyce. And today's topic is Behind the Blueprint, getting to know your host, Devin Hayes. <laughs> and here's why you should care. Gain insight into the expertise and unique perspectives that shape the valuable contracts or marketing advice that we bring to you each week. Welcome to Trade Secrets, where we demystify digital marketing to help contractors get the most bang for their marketing bucks. This is for you if you're a contractor looking for actionable marketing insights. Learn from home services industry experts to elevate your business through simplified marketing strategies. Let's dive into today's trade secret. Yay, best topic we've ever had. In the history of the show, in the history of always, <laughs> De- definitely not. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited that we get to dive in and just kind of learn more about you, um, my business partner, one of my best friends, all the things. I get to talk to you every day, but our listeners don't, and I think it's really important for them to get to know who you are and understand all the incredible value you bring to the table, understand your chops um, as a marketer, as a contractor marketer, all the things. So um, without further ado, let's dive in a little bit. (laughs) All that build up. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Drum roll, please. Okay. So one of the things that I find so fascinating about you and that makes you so good at what, what we do today is your experience in the Navy. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about like early baby Devin, straight out of high Anytime. school, heading into the Navy and um, just, you know, how, how you feel like that experience in the Navy has kind of shaped your career trajectory at, at then and now. Yeah. Um, so, okay. When I was, uh, I don't know, in high school, senior year, I had no idea wanted, what I wanted to do in life. Um, I actually, I didn't think I was smart enough to get into college. And so I knew I wanted to travel and see the world. So I was like, well, why not like join the Navy and kind of see the world and figure it out. And, um, no one in my family had been in the military. So it was really out of the blue when I did it, but going into it, um, when I tested, it was really funny. The ASVAB told me that I should be like an airplane mechanic or some shit. And I was like, what? Just like I always dreamed. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I had always been like a strong writer and creative. And so I don't, I was like, no, um, give me something in communication. So uh, when I went in, um, I was a radio man. And while I was in that merged with a data processor to make what's called you know, to, an IT, which we all know what an IT is now. So Anyway, so I when I went into the Navy, it was a pretty technical job, but it was comms. I did shipboard, um, comms, secure, non-secure, voice and data. And um, and so I learned a lot of technical things uh, pretty quickly, like building a circuit from the ground up to communicate and um, secure, non-secure circuits. But uh, yeah, I didn't really know I had a knack for like the technical piece of things, but I really excelled in the military and I was on like a... Radcon team, which our my ship was out of Guam and it um serviced all the submarines in the Pacific Fleet, and uh, we had because we service submarines. There's obviously nuclear submarines, and I was on the Radcon team and um was responsible for comms if there was like a radiological incident. So, just like I just really excelled, and I apparently understood technology more than I ever yeah. knew. <laughs> I did so, um. I did active duty for four years. I was in, you know, during 9-11, I was like the first, it was actually 9-12 in Guam for me. It was the middle of the night and my friends and family were calling the barracks and they're like, get to a TV, go turn it on. So I went and I turned it on and the barracks officer on duty happened to be my chief. And so we're sitting there watching and she's like, Wisner, that's my maiden name. She's like, go get your uniform on. So we headed to the ship. You have to have, you know, like an AB combo to get into the safe, to load the new crypto, to like get the comms coming from the white house. So I was actually like the first on scene, like on my ship on nine twelve for us, like getting the information coming in and having to, my job was to route it. And and we were on shore. So like, I'm sure the captain and the EXO, they were getting like phone calls and like, you know, actual internet communication, but official government comms, you know, um, were coming through radio. I had to like route that to them. So it was just my chief and I that went and then we, then everyone got recalled to the ship and then, you know, we went out to sea, but, uh, 
that was like, so I was in, yeah, that's, that's aging myself a bit, but that's when I was in and, um, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I did, yeah, four years active duty in the Navy. And then I, um, actually got accepted into college here in Colorado. Um, and I had new orders to my next duty station, which was admiral's, um, duty, uh, in Hawaii for the commander of the third fleet. And I was like, uh, actually to go be like their, you know, work their IT department for the Admiral. Cause I just letting you know how cool I was in the Navy. <laughs> no, but I, uh, I was like, I got into college. I'm smart enough. Oh my God. Like I'm getting out. So I got out and then just did the active reserves for a while. But, um, and then I went to college and had a dual major in international business and marketing. And then, um, after after doing that, I was like, now what? Well, I went to Metro for a year and then I went to CU uh, and graduated from there. But anyways, nobody cares about that. Um, all, all, all that to say that I guess I just, I didn't know I had the technical background, but I really liked the creative part of like marketing and advertising. Like I grew up like thinking that I would be someone who would like make up the catchy jingles to commercials and <laughs> stuff like that. I always, I love creative things like that, but um, I, I, I don't know. So that's, so, so what I love now kind of, I guess, um, I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but what I do now with SEO, it's like the perfect combination of having to like be creative, like use technology, do like data analysis, um, to come up with like a comprehensive strategy because it's different for every market and every, every customer that we, you know, work with. So, it's kind of, I, this didn't exist when I graduated high school. So there's no way I could have like known this is what I would fall into, but Mm -hmm. it's, um, so it's kind of like the perfect job, but, uh, telling my story, going back after graduating college, then I, my first job I got was actually for a massive, um, electrician, mass electric, literally, uh, they are a subsidiary of Kiwit construction, which is a huge multi-billion dollar general contractor, that I'm sure everyone's heard of. So, uh, I worked for, I went there and worked on a wastewater recycling facility. It was a brand new, new construction. I didn't have to like smell the shit all day. (laughs) It was brand new, but just, so I just kind of fell into construction as a niche, like right out of college. I didn't even, I didn't mean to, I mean, my, my dad's a contractor, like my uncle was an iron worker. So was my cousin. Like I just have like a long line of, you know, contractors within my family, but um, didn't mean to kind of fall into that niche. And so I went from mass electric, then I moved across the country for a boyfriend to upstate New York. And I worked for a GC up there. And then sadly, after that didn't work out, not sadly, (laughs) not, (laughs) not, not sadly at all. Um, Mm. I, yeah, moved back home to Colorado and then started working for Vertex and that kind of altered things, um, I think, my life's course pretty substantially. Um, Vertex, they are, I mean, they act as like an owner's project manager. They have, um, they're really well known for their construction defect litigation services, expert witness testimony, things like that. So kind of like a more technical construction niche. Yeah. But um, that's where I had like one of, I guess, even still today, someone I really admire and respect and look up to uh the CEO and one of the owners, Bill McConnell. Um, he was a great boss. And then I don't know, I, he, he was just really inspiring. And after I eventually moved on, cause I wanted to make more money, um, and worked in kind of the financial sector for a little bit before going on my own. Um, he, while I was dabbling in this financial sector work, he was like, can you please just come, can you please moonlight for us and do X, Y, and Z? Uh, we've been through two marketing people since you've left in nine months. Apparently it's pretty technical and hard to write about. Can you just execute these tasks for us each month? I'm like, yeah, sure. So learned a ton from that business. It is way more technical than like, you know, the contractors that we work with, but it really makes you kind of understand the space and understand like the bigger, I don't know, the bigger picture in terms of how the economy impacts like everybody from like from the macro down to the micro so it was it really shaped like just gave me a different perspective on things too so um I think that unique experience really kind of helps as we're coming up with strategies for our clients too because we're not just focused on like 
the tactical things. We do look at it from like a bigger perspective and what is going on in the economy and in the market space and in their market space to come up with um, kind of our, our the different strategies that we have in each vertical in each market. So um, I don't think that I would have even thought to assess that if I didn't have that experience, you know, like you, always, you look yeah. at the market, but I don't know that you really look at the big picture and GDP and following construction spend. Like, I don't think that's something that um, I ever would have considered had I not worked in this space. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, that's kind of like the really long winded version <laughs> Uh, and then, so, oh, so then to how I got here, um, after a year of working, um, in the mortgage industry and being the marketing director for a massive, uh, lender here in Colorado, I, um, very quickly learned that I, that wasn't a good fit. Uh, <laughs> the culture wasn't the best, but at the same time, my husband was the owner of a roofing company and every morning he wasn't like racing to like get in the shower, work out at 5 a.m. to get out the door by 6.15 to make like an hour commute to the other side of town. You know, he wasn't stuck on this hamster wheel and, and he, you know, was doing great. And I was like, I was kind of, kind of jealous. And about that same time I met you and that's when I learned that you had your own marketing agency. And I was like, what? You, you can just do that? And I it, li- it literally like blew my mind that you had this successful agency and you had, at, when I met you, you'd been doing it for like five or six years or something. And I was like, for real? And I, I get, you had this beautiful house and like you just had all this stuff going for you. I'm like, oh my God, she's got, she's got a damn hot tub. She's got like a, a, <laughs> chal- a guest chalet, if you will. You know the one. You know, know the one. And, and this, so anyway, so I, so all these things combined, the universe is like, here's, here's your husband. He's this great, amazing, wonderful guy. He's in the roofing space, but I did any, and then met you. And so then all of those things kind of combined. Um, and with Bill asking me to do that stuff on the side, I was like, well, if I can moonlight on the side for him, maybe I can do this on my own. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, uh, and then shortly, shortly thereafter I kind of went on my own started doing the um marketing for elite roofing and then yep. you and I started working together because I'm like I I need your content skills I need like I need I, I can't I can't do everything and I know I know enough to know where I'm I'm weak and you're strong and and um so I loved that we got to work together before we eventually like joined our agencies and did a little bit of cross selling and then you know, here we are today, like, what are we going on? Like almost five, is it five years in November? It is. Five year anniversary in November. Our five year anniversary. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that was all, that was my, my whole background. I think you started with a very simple question of did the Navy <laughs> like help get you to where you are? Or like, you I don't know. Yeah. Long story, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, lots of lots of construction experience along the way after the Navy. Absolutely. Also, I I think I think being in the Navy like prepared me for the contractor space. Like, there's not a lot you could say that's that surprises me or shocks me. There's like you know, <laughs> and you have that trait too. Like, we're just I think that's it. Yeah, exactly. it's a beautiful thing. Growing up with brothers that helps too. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that'll do absolutely. it to you. But I want you to talk a little bit too about about your time, your elite being really the first contractor company that, you know, that you started, that you really worked with, that you cut your teeth, like not in, not in a big, in a big engineering firm, not like when you were frankly really focused there, um, like talk about like, you know, you went from, yeah, you had the Vertex thing going to help you launch your business, but then Cody and Randy reached out to you and wanted you to help with their work. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and it was different because I was Vertex. It was like on an international scale, whereas marketing director for their um, construction services. And so marketing on an international level and then even nationally, and then pairing it way down to just like local. First of all, I'm like, oh, oh God, I could do this all day. Like this is so much easier (laughs) than a nationwide campaign um, and strategy. So with Elite, it was so, it was funny. Like I had 
been doing my like moonlighting and side hustle and then getting into my own business. And, um, it was not Cody's idea, Cody's idea. Cody and Randy are joint owners of elite roofing. And it was actually Randy who was like, will you take a look at what we've got going on? So I took a look. I'm like, ew, you guys, what are you doing? (laughs) Their website was, their website was literally, I think just pictures of like six coupons. And, um, there was some other like weird stuff on there. They didn't own it. I, I was like, I asked their web guy, I'm like, can I look at like the analytics, you know? And he's like, what's Google analytics? So they didn't have any tracking on this. Like they had like, they had nothing. And I, I never wanted to like butt in. So when, and I'm sure Cody felt the same way. So when Randy asked me, it was really, it was nice. I was like, well, let me just take a look. Uh, and then kind of the relationship went from there, but I mean, immediately, like we had like their website needed something. It was, it was so bad. Um, so yeah, I think we started with like just little projects here and there, like a very, very like small retainer. They were still a small company. They were just getting started because this had to be about, uh, 2013, maybe 2004, Mm -hmm. 2014. I think so. Anyway, so they were, they were much smaller then. And, um, and then as we hope to do with all of our customers, as they grew, like my my services and what, you know, my retainer with them grew and kind of expanded. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, So it was, it was kind of cool learning about roofing and, and learning what works and doesn't work. And what's so beautiful about that relationship is there's a whole bunch of trust because obviously like I've got skin in the game too. So it's not, a waste of money. So it's nice to say, um, and take that to where we are with our clients too. Like, this isn't me like guessing or like take, like following like an SEO 101 course. Like this is like proven, like look at their positioning in the Denver market, one of the most competitive markets and, and truly like sharing because we only take one contractor per market so that we're not cannibalizing Peter, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul kind of thing. Um, we can share what we've learned in other markets with our other clients, you know, and it's yeah. like, look, this really worked. This didn't work. Um, but what we learned is X, Y, and Z. So yeah, it's been, it's, it's helped, I think, shape and build trust for our agency kind of with, um, roofers for sure. But even like the home services space, um, the metrics and, a lot of the selling is kind of similar. Like homeowners pain points are the construction, um, the, you know, the communication is always a pain point. So they have a lot of the same pain points and they're, and, and they're, um, trying to reach the same people. So, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah it's, I don't know. It's been so fun to, I mean, I, even back in the day you were pulling me in a little bit before we merged where I was helping do content stuff early and then, you know, but knowing like where you took them from to when I got involved and then to like where they are today, it's just, it's such a fun test case. And, um, you know, it's, it is, it's, and it's so nice to have that trust because I know they could be like, well, it's the owner's wife, but like when you have like something to prove and show, like, look at your positioning, look at the leads, you know, whatever, look at all this yeah. stuff. Um, and it's so nice. There's just a lot of, a lot of trust there and, um, they know, they absolutely know I have their best interests in mind. And so, uh, that's what we hope to have with all of our clients, because when there's that trust and you know that we, we truly care, then when things look bad, because there's an algorithm update, like you, you know, that we're not sleeping on the job and trying to put you in a bad position. Like we look at your money, like it's our own money because, you know, again, like my dad being a contractor and stuff, like I, I would, I just, I, I know how hard earned that money is and I never want to take that for granted that we're being trusted with your business and your marketing dollars. Like it just is like inherently like, ugh, like Absolutely. part of yeah. his soul to like take yeah. care of people, you know? Yeah. And you're there every day to see the, you know, what Cody goes through as a business owner in the space, you know, like the stresses yeah. he deals with, like, so, you know, sometimes it's money's flying in the door and everything's great. Other times, you know, it's life is slow and it just gives you such a unique perspective into their just experience and then it makes it that much more exciting to get to like meet these guys that are salt of the earth really great people and really help them where they need it most and like listening to those stories like you know being married to a roofer you you, then I get so many ideas for content I'm like listen to this crazy story 
I've got a great idea. Like, let's do X, Y, and Z. And it's just things that, you know, you wouldn't know. You can research a space like all you want to, but when you're having those conversations, like when you have the content interviews with our clients, those conversations, you get so much more out of them than, you know, what SEM rush or Ahrefs tells us like users are searching for, you know, like exactly. it's so well, what an AI yeah. bot could ever tell you what well, he can tell you yeah. at the dinner table about an interaction he had with the client earlier in the day is like gold that you would yeah. get otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it is, I mean, it is, quite beneficial <laughs> that my husband's a roofer and that I, you know, kind of just fell into that space. But I did have like a huge, like all my experience was in construction and technical, um, yeah. up until my one, my, my 12 month stint in the brief, financial yeah. sector. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Learned just enough to know that, that, uh, that wasn't not my, your space. not my space. <laughs> it's great for a lot of people. And yeah. I just yeah. was not a good fit. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to go back to what I know. So. Yeah. Okay. So I know we just talked about elite a lot. So this might be an unfair question to ask because to me, I would think that you would lean towards elite, but is there, are there any other like success stories that really stick out to you about your experience just in the contractor marketing space? That's like a point of pride for you or I mean, the elite, but. <laughs> I know, I know. I think, and I, I mean, I hate to lean on elite. We love, we love our um, Vancouver electrician. That one's been awesome. We even have like a smaller um, roofer in Dayton and he like, he, his dad passed unexpectedly pretty young and he took over this roofing company and, um, and he was very green. And so I like like that's kind of a feel good story just because I know like his positioning is so strong. Um, and we, and, and that's just a great, st- that one's like a feel good story just because like knowing him and like that story, you just really, really wanted it to go well. So I, I do love that one. Cause he's like, they're killing it in Dayton. And then of course, elite roofing, there's, um, we've gotten a lot of clients from them because people reverse engineer and they figure out like who does their marketing. Cause if they're number one in Denver, then they can do it for me in my market. And, mm-hmm. um, and so that is, that is a point of pride and um, it's kind of a, a fun, a fun story. They, they definitely have worked with other agencies for like um, direct mail or um, doing some like graphic design, you know, but uh, yeah, we've done all of their digital marketing and strategy for, coming up on 10 years it'll be 10 years here I think next year so so that one um I'm trying to think I'm really really proud we've just got a lot of good stuff going on um our our plumber in Australia um I it's only been I don't know like uh three months maybe with him not even three yeah, months like two. not even like I said yeah not even about to start month three yeah and just like the growth and tweaks, like, and I don't, I don't think his previous agency was doing like a bad job. They definitely were doing like all of like checking all the boxes, but they just needed like more of a technical strategy. And I love to see how quickly it's already like kind of paying off in terms of everything we're measuring for them. So, um, I don't know. I, I guess, yeah, I, that's a long winded answer, but there's, there's but so many great. and yeah. And I think what, and why I think why we work together so well is like, we just love our clients and just all of them. It feels so good to see them like succeed. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. I just, I love, I love all of them and I love all of their stories and I love like being part of their, their story and their business. Absolutely. It really is personal. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, it's a, we're, we're just, we're the lucky ones (laughs) that they picked us to be different completely yeah Yeah. okay let's talk about um emerging marketing trends in the contract space what are you seeing (sighs) video 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 um shorts longs turned into shorts (laughs) um reels youtube shorts i would if i were a contractor i would um I would just get into the short space now, um, get into YouTube search results. Now, like you would have zero click, um, search results, you know, where the answer kind of shows up on the page and you don't have to click through to get what you're looking for. Now YouTube videos are showing up for those 
kind of knowledge panel results. So um, that's where I would I would focus. Um, it has a massive impact on your SEO, and you know I love SEO. That's 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 my jam. Um, but I think um, I think that's that's where I would focus. That's what's going to make you stand out. That's what's going to make you be unique and help sell your brand. But also like on the technical side of things, or the SEO I should say side of things. Um, that's going to move the needle for you. So it's, it's, you're winning twofold as consumers. We're consuming so much more video content than we ever have before. And we do it in like quick snips. So a three minute YouTube video, while that is good for SEO, you can actually take that and pare it down into shorts and put that on YouTube shorts. And, you know, you don't have to be on every social media channel. I don't, I don't think, um, but pick one and just do it really well if you're if you're going to post it on there but definitely youtube shorts so video Love video it. video 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 that is that is and and i don't even know if it's emerging anymore but it's only getting stronger i think youtube shorts is more emerging than like mm-hmm. reels or tiktok those have been yeah. around for a while the, now the yeah the longer form youtube videos where someone's like just over educating you for too long i think those that for a long time was how people did video and I can see how for a lot of contractors, like, I don't have time for that. But everyone's got time to do some shorts and to give those quick, those quick little bite, tidbits of information that you wish every homeowner knew before you walked into their house. Talk about a way to gain, you know, trust with them and yep. to, you know, to, to gain search rankings. And on top of it, we've also been having a lot of success lately with running YouTube ads with some of those shorter little videos as well. Another really inexpensive way to get, to just get your brand out there in the areas that matter most, so. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, definitely YouTube shorts. And then the other, I don't know if I would call it a trend. I don't even know how to, how to talk about this little nugget, but, um, our friend Bing with, you know, their little, it might be at 3.7% market share now. Okay. But what we do know is nobody cares about, I'm sure you're listening to this going, Oh my God, they're talking about Bing again. But our, our like in-house metrics that we've seen kind of across the board with Bing, you're getting an 11% conversion rate versus, you know, you'd be happy with like a two or 3% conversion rate. 5% is unheard of. In Bing, it's 11%. And that's, that's paid and organic combined. But still, it, even if you do combined paid and organic on Google, it's, it's, you're not at 11%. So that would be that, that would be like my other like kind of Maybe not a trend, mm-hmm. but a little tip. Yeah, yeah, like a yeah, like because of their again, as we've mentioned before, um, when they you know kind of had that partnership with Chat GPT, they're taking a little bit of the market share. But those users are a lot more intentional, typically like an older demographic, um, who's who's ready to make a purchase. Um, and so I I would say do some YouTube shorts and um, don't. Don't sleep on Bing, as we've said. Check out that podcast if you haven't listened to it. <laughs> More to come. More to come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I have loved this so much. I, I love to just get people to get to know you better. And No, before we close, what am I talking about? I want to talk personal for a minute. Why don't you tell us oh. about your family and where you're from and just, you know, what you do when you're not here sharing all your brilliance with us. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So... Um, I live in Colorado. We're in Littleton, kind of the base of the foothills. Um, my, I live in this beautiful home with my husband, Cody, and my two boys and my dog, Frankie. You can learn, see Frank and um, Connor and Cameron behind me. there. the cutest little bit. Oh, I have this cute little picture. I got to show you my babies. They're adorable. So <laughs> Um, <laughs> their silly face so anyway so I live here with them and I yeah we just um love the outdoors try to do camping as much as we can and snowboarding and I don't know all the I don't know music and festivals and galas oh and I do volunteer with Safe House Denver I love them um they're a nonprofit here in Denver and uh, they help victims of domestic violence and they help educate the community on domestic violence and I've been volunteering with them for I think like 12 years now a really a long time yeah so so that's yeah I really um 
I love my time with them. And then, of course, I decided because I wasn't busy enough, I needed to volunteer with Connor's school and uh, help out on the PTA and wear that hat, which um, it's great getting to know like the business leaders in the community and a lot of the parents and kind of the business of school. So anyway, yeah. I, I definitely stay busy outside of work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is far from all you do all day. So. Awesome. Yes. Okay, let's close with, you've shared so many great tidbits, but is there any other like last closing little tip you'd want to share share with our listeners when it comes to their marketing efforts um, before we call this one a wrap? Oh my gosh, I hate to copy what you said when we did this for you, but trust your agency. Um, I would say like vet them out before you even hire them. Ask a lot of questions. Don't make um, a, a fast decision on who you hire because if you don't have that trust, it, then you're gonna want to you're gonna want to like pull your dollars like two months in before you see any results without understanding like the work that's gone in or maybe looking at the metrics. So I I think that that's the most important thing of all time. You know, we would love for you to trust us, but there's a lot of great other agencies in the space, but you just need to make sure you're asking all, all the right questions and things that would make you feel good and comfortable at the end of the day, get that reassurance from them or how you would be reassured ask those questions and have, and have that trust um, because it's no fun for the agency to have a client that doesn't trust them and thinks that they're just, you know, highway robbers. Like that's not a good fit and you will have wasted thousands of dollars on maybe an initial setup or your first month. Um, and I know for our agency, we invest very heavily the first like three months on a whole bunch of things, let alone our time and expertise. But um, so to, so to cut something short before those that heavy investment actually takes hold is, um, it's, it's just a brutal mistake. And you're going to keep reinvesting those same thousands of dollars up front every time you switch agencies. So, um, find someone you trust and, and then I don't, I, I think, I mean, you, you said that and I hate to repeat it, but it is no, true. But yeah, absolutely. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. It's I, I on agencies. And I do, and I actually, let me throw this one in here and just make a, a little curveball here. I think that there are so many good contractor business coaches out there. I I just, and we've talked to, we've had on our podcast, Randy Stanberry of Four Level Coaching. He's amazing, but I, he's, he's great, but um. Benji Carlson at Breakthrough Academy. I did a podcast with him. I am a Breakthrough Academy stan. I know several contractors through there and their program is top notch. And I I think they help you understand the metrics to look for in an agency, but also like looking at your own numbers for your own business, all that kind of thing. I I really feel like as if you're like a business in like, I don't know, like the one to $3 million range or not even that, like that's beginning, but I would say one to $10 million range for sure. There's like a space for you, like find a program with a business coach, because I think that is going to help you grow faster. They'll help you understand the numbers. Maybe you don't understand from your agency or help you pick an agency or help you prioritize. Like, do you need an agency yet? Maybe you don't, maybe you need to focus on a CRM and some other automations before you're ready to invest in that piece of it. So um, Love it. I will say, yeah. yeah, finding a great, like a great business coach is, would be, I think, um, really, really beneficial to any contractor out there. Yeah. I love that. And just to, to play on that a little bit, if you're on the fence about whether or not you need a business coach, go back and check out that recent interview we did with Randy and it's probably going to blow your mind and you're going to be like, where do I sign up? <laughs> The, the amount of things they can help you uncover in your business that you you can't see beyond the forest, you're going to, yeah, it's going to do great things for you. So freaking awesome tip. As usual, yeah. you're brilliant. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for yeah. letting me talk about myself for 30 minutes. I really <laughs> enjoyed it. <laughs> Best 30 minutes of my day. So, yeah. <laughs> thanks for letting oh, me interview gosh. you. And, guys, thanks for listening. We hope this makes you realize even more um, where our marketing chops are coming from and, and why it is you should tune in each week um, and lean on some of the advice we're going to be delving out. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, guys. That was today's trade secret. Thanks for listening. Did you find this helpful? We're just getting started. Subscribe and don't miss our next reveal. Until next time. <laughs>